Previously on MasterChef, the top home cooks in America took their place in the MasterChef kitchen. This is the kitchen of your dreams. And it wasn't long before things got heated. <laughs> you underestimated the wrong person. Keep cooking. Shut your mouth. Somebody's going home tonight. Who is it? Mac and cheese girl over here. I have never hated someone so much. The elimination test saw some disastrous dishes. It looks like someone pooped on the plate. Mm. This is a waste of time. In the end... I'm sorry, your time is done in MasterChef. Sasha was the first MasterChef hopeful eliminated. Tonight... It's the first team challenge of the season. They're children, not animals. As the home cooks face their toughest critics yet. My mom cooks better. Guys, I need help. Start putting some meatballs on or you're never going to have it done. Seriously about the loose end. And then a pressure test turns ugly fast. That was a bitch move. Who will see their culinary dream come to an end? One of you is going home. It all happens right now on MasterChef. It's an early start for our 18 remaining home cooks who are about to face their first MasterChef team challenge. I'm on a bus headed to, I assume, a school, because buses usually go to schools. If we were to go back to high school, I was a tomboy. Bree would be, like, the quiet one. Eddie would be the athlete. Howard would probably be one of the cool guys. James would be kind of the oddball. And Christy would be the loudmouth. I have more enemies than friends, because I never got to my mail shot. Our bus arrives at Emperor Elementary School as the students begin their morning studies. The best home cooks in America are about to get a lesson of their own. All right, guys, 18 home cooks on time and ready for class. <laughs> Let's go, guys. Come on. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Good morning, Chef. Good morning. Welcome to your very first MasterChef Team Challenge. In a couple of hours from now, you will be cooking for the most picky eaters on the planet. Your challenge today is to provide a healthy, nutritious lunch to over 300 elementary school children. Oh. I have never in my life cooked for large masses, uh, let alone 301 kids, so I'm in for a roller coaster today. Each team is responsible for one entree and a dessert. You'll have just one hour and 45 minutes to prepare and cook your lunch dishes, and then 90 minutes to serve each and every child here a delicious, healthy, nutritious meal. One, they'll actually want to eat because they're the judges today. <laughs> the losing team will, of course, face their very first pressure test where at least one of you will be expelled from MasterChef for good. Understood? Yes, yes Chef. Jesse and Jordan, you had the best two dishes in the last elimination test. You will be today's team captains. Please go stand here next to Gordon. I rarely cook for kids. I have one niece and two nephews, so I'm going to pick some people that I know are going to be a good asset for my team, especially when it comes to feeding kids. Jesse, since you had the best dish in the elimination test, you have the huge advantage of first round draft pick. I think I want to go with Len. Yeah, first. Wow. I pick Len to be on my team first because he can plate things impeccably, so he will oversee the final product. Len, how are you feeling? It's always a great feeling to get picked first. That's who I was going to pick. He's a multi-talented individual when it comes to the kitchen. Jordan. Uh, this person, the experience they have working hand-in-hand -hand with children is going to be a, quite a benefit. I'm going to pick Savannah. Savannah, wow. It's my wow, second wow, wow. choice. I did want Savannah because she's a school teacher. Who better to have on your team? I'm gonna go with Bethy. Bethy. I'm gonna go with James. Thank you, sir. I'm going with Beth. My next apron is gonna go to somebody that has a great grasp on the nutrition aspect, Eddie. Let's go, Eddie. I'm going with Beamy. Beamy, wow. We win it. You picked the right person. I'm gonna go with Johnny. Johnny, welcome to the blue team. Natasha. Natasha. I can stick my foot down as hard as she can, and I'm not scared of her because I'm going to show her authority, and she's going to listen to me. 
So, Chrissy, why don't you walk on over here? Everybody's scared of my mouth. Everybody thinks I'm kind of, like, going to take over. Wow. Let's go, you son of a bitch. <laughs> and people don't like that. Oh, well. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> Three. Wow. Adriana. Let's go. Thank you, Jordan. You got it. I'm going to pick you, Luca. Interesting. He has a hard exterior, but he's got a soft interior. I'm going with Howard. OK, last two. Uh, you're picking both teams. Could be smart now. There's Malcolm and Kathy. I can see how I can screw Jordan. I'm going to pick Malcolm. Wow, wow, wow. By taking Malcolm, he gets stuck with Kathy. She's the weak link. Kathy, nobody picked you. How does that make you feel? I don't care. I love being underestimated because people don't know what I'm going to bring to them. Like, they'll wake up eventually. You can kick some ass for me? You got it. I have a few middle of the rotors, but everybody here can cook. So as long as they listen to me, I, I think we can succeed. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Your one hour, 45 minutes prep time starts now. Let's go. In this team challenge, the red and blue teams must now create a healthy menu for the elementary school students. The meal must contain a protein, a starch, a vegetable, and a fruit. All right, guys, veg-wise, we've got cauliflower, green beans, corn, Brussels. No greens, no greens. No greens. Kids hate green. Corn. OK, no greens, so corn is sounding good, right? I'm depending on my teammates to know what kids like. They all said their kids don't touch greenery, so we wanted corn. We didn't want green beans and broccoli. No. If we did chicken like teriyaki, it could be all cooked, and you have it in sauce, so it's hot. We're cooking for kids. We're not cooking for us. Yeah. Right, we'll make it super so, simple. Rice and chicken. All right, go ahead. Go, whatever it is. Uh, fruit dessert. Let's do strawberries. Some strawberries. Some strawberries. Kids like strawberries. All right, we know what we want. Despite some objections, Red Team Captain Jesse has decided to go with chicken teriyaki, corn, and a strawberry crumble for their kids' lunch menu. While on the blue team, our home cooks head in a more conventional direction. Pasta, pasta. Yeah, we have pasta. Why don't we do turkey meatball? We got whole tomatoes? Yeah, we got whole tomatoes. Whole tomatoes. I'll, so I'll you make can a do a gravy? Hour. We got green beans. Yeah. You think we can make green beans work? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. definitely. We need some sort of fruit. We got apples? Yeah, we got Granny Smith. I'll make an apple crisp. I think it's straightforward. Spaghetti and meatball menu is going to be awesome for kids. One, two, three. Blue team! The blue team quickly agrees on their menu turkey meatballs and pasta with green beans and an apple crisp for dessert. But Gordon has some concerns. So the execution of this with 300 kids is just paramount. How many meatballs per portion? we will probably be right, right around two. If it's going to be short, two we'll check the... So two balls. Yeah. So that's, that's literally 600. You got it. Wow. You Good got luck. it. Thank you, sir. Jordan and the blue team pick meatballs in a marinara sauce. Classic. Smart. So right. kids are going to see that, recognize the color. Beautiful red. It's something that they've had numerous times before. Yeah. So red team's menu. Mm -hmm. Jesse selected chicken teriyaki. Huh. At that age, they eat with their eyes. So you're going to see a dark piece of chicken with a dark sauce on there. Maybe a bit of a turn off. The selection of meatball versus chicken teriyaki, there's no doubt in my mind that I'm going meatballs. Blue team's menu may sound better, but you've got a lot of prep involved. 600 meatballs. 600 yeah. meatballs are going to make? 600 meatballs. Oh, two, my two God. Weeks. So right now, yeah. I don't know. It's neck and neck. Guys, 50 minutes left. Less than one hour to cook for 300 elementary school students. Be careful. Don't overmix it. While the blue team continues to season their meatballs, the red team has already started searing their chicken. But Joe and Graham notice a serious problem. Hey, listen, if you keep on moving that chicken around so much, you're going to basically just boil yeah. it. You want it to get some caramelization on it. You see this much steam, that's just all water coming all out, and that's water. cooking it all the way around. Yep. So you want less on that grill and more more evenly distributed. What? Jesse, you see what's going on over here? On, like, one side, there's, like, a 1,000 pounds of chicken. Over here is a whole flat top warming a pan of corn. I've got Malcolm and Lynn handling the meat. There's a whole work surface and all the chicken's in one pile, so it's not cooking right. Jesse, you got to take control here because this is going to be boiled chicken. So the boys acted like they hadn't cooked chicken before, which made me really nervous. As Jesse gets the red team back on track, the judges discover an even more pressing issue on the blue team. 
Guys, you just started making meatballs. Ten more trays like that to get to 300 meatballs. Twenty more to get to 600 meatballs. We're gonna be cutting it close. All the time it's taken us making all these meatballs is just stupid. Someone start putting some meatballs on this flat top, or you're never gonna have it done. Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. Step it up. Get your team together and step it up now. Everybody. With just 30 minutes remaining until lunch service, the blue team, led by Captain Jordan, is scrambling to prep and cook over 600 meatballs for 300-plus elementary school students. What I'm trying to do is get your head in the game. There's 50 meatballs. Right. You're still minus 550. You need to start diversing and someone step up and take responsibility. No way it's going to work. Nowhere near it. But no one seems to care about it. So We're going to have to change our game plan. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? It makes me nervous to change. However, I know this is such an easier approach. You guys, we're doing a... Hey, we're just going to do a meat sauce. Don't even... Hey, you don't need to roll them anymore. No more rolling. We're done rolling. All right. Just chop it up. Just chop it while the blue team rushes to turn their meatballs into meat sauce, the red team is struggling with the seasoning for their chicken teriyaki. Have you tasted it, Jesse? The teriyaki sauce. I did. It's too salty, and they're working on it, and they're thickening it. That's it? Why is it so watery? We had to add more water because it's too salty. But surely you put fruit in there for kids, like pineapple or, you know, some ketchup in there or something. We could, we could. Oh, and for kids, right? Yes, it's not, yes, it's not yes. adult teriyaki, right? So I'm just trying to make it a little bit more sweeter, right? yeah. yeah. Pineapple right. will probably I'll go look to good. see if we have that. Jesse, just taste that. There's no seasoning anything. They're children, not animals. No, but this, this is not seasoned yet. We're going to season yeah, it when I mix no it with flavor. the kettle. Why wouldn't they put the vegetables at the beginning so the vegetables and the rice cook at the same time? Cooking vegetables separate, adding to rice? I mean, this is insane. With not long to go before lunch service, Gordon checks in on the elementary school students to assess their food preferences. Will they favor the blue team's pasta and meat sauce or the red team's chicken teriyaki? So I'm going to ask a few questions about the food. Who likes turkey? Yeah. Hmm. Who likes spaghetti? Oh, yeah. oh. Who likes chicken? Yeah. Here we go. Who likes chicken teriyaki? No. no. I never try it. Oh, dear. I need more sauce. OK, it's right here. Hey, yeah, it's, it's good. Right? We're good. I think it's good. I think we were able to fix the teriyaki sauce. After, you know, adding 10 extra ingredients and thickening it up, and I finally feel like we have a really good sauce. With under five minutes to go before service, the red team has started plating. Come on, we need more rice, we need more rice. While the blue team hasn't finished one of their sides. James, I need that salad up here ASAP. We need to start plating it. I've got a pot full of green beans. It's not boiling. These kids are going to be here. It's just not getting hot. Like, I don't know what to do. Red team, blue team, one minute to go. Bean salad, I need it ASAP. 25 seconds. They're barely cooked. But hey, we, we got to serve the green beans anyway, regardless of how cooked they are. Give it to me. Go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's go. There come the kids. Come on, guys. The kids are coming. Oh, my God. They're so loud. <laughs> Holy <laughs> I look up and I see a sea of kids. And I'm like, oh, gosh, this is going to be painful. These kids are coming like a flood right now, man, like a tsunami. This is my nightmare. This is the day I die. Boys and girls, are you hungry? Yeah! Let's go, guys. Hi, buddy. Oh, my God, look how cute you are. The teams now have just one hour to serve lunch to 301 picky elementary school children. The students will taste both teams' dishes and then vote for their favorite. You are so cute. I need more plates. I need more plates. The blue team is serving pasta and meat sauce with green beans and an apple crisp. Here you go. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. The red team is serving chicken teriyaki and rice with corn and a strawberry crumble. I need some plates, please. 
I don't know what they were doing behind me. Just give me plates. What is the problem? I need plates! Chrissy's got nothing to serve. No coordination. No one knows what they're doing. Come on, Jordan, take control, man. Jordan is pretty much frazzled. We're all just trying to move as quick as possible to put everything on the plate for these kids. Let me just give you some ice cream, OK? Oh, my god. Guys, I need help. As both teams fight to keep up with the endless lunch line, Joe heads out to the students to see whose food is getting the best grades. Did you get to try both food or the red team and the blue team? What did you like better? I like the blue team better. You like the blue team better? The blue team, the blue team. Who are you going to vote for? Red. Red? There you are. I really don't like the blue team's green beans. But they're hard. They're I know, like... they're not cooked. The blue team's green beans bent my fork. You like red better? Why? Chicken is like barbecue chicken. It's like barbecue, so yeah. it's a little sweet. Yeah. You like that? I got a lot of really good feedback on the chicken, which is surprising for me because I thought it would be more more salty, and instead yeah. they made it sweet. It was smart. Yeah. And then there's people who just love pasta, and they're going for the pasta. Already? Yeah, so it's either one or the other. It's really a toss-up. Gotta hit me faster. It's more than halfway through service, and while the blue team's start was unsteady, they have managed to keep up the pace. Come on, Come guys! On. But on the red team, service is beginning to fall apart. Come on, we need just rice on a plate, rice on a plate. That's all that matters right now, Bethy. The kids just never quit coming. I don't know where they're coming from, but they're just coming in like a herd of sheep. Dessert behind. I'm a dessert behind. I'm a dessert. I'm two desserts behind. Three desserts behind. The kids come faster than we're ready for them, and I see empty plates, and I'm furious because these empty plates mean they can't vote for us. We need hands now. Jesse, get organized here, guys. What team do you love? Yeah! yeah! It's the final moments of the first MasterChef team challenge. Not only do our home cooks have 301 mouths to feed, but they have to ensure the kids get high quality food on every plate. Thank you. You are very welcome. While the blue team led by Captain Jordan has successfully served lunch to all their students, the red team led by Captain Jesse has missed several plates. I don't want any more plates, Miss Fellas. Every plate has to have food on it or it doesn't get counted. If those kids don't have our plate, that's kids not trying our food, that's losing votes, basically. So, red team, I don't think the teriyaki was the right move. However, it, it's pretty decent, but their dessert is outstanding. What do you think? It's hard. It's really hard because I would choose the pasta over the rice and chicken teriyaki. However, the veggies, the corn over on red, I think totally smokes the blue. I thought the chicken was a bit of a risk. They executed it, they fixed it, it was too salty, they made it sweet. I'm all for the red team on this challenge. Although the judges favor the red team's menu, it will be the children's votes that will determine the winner. Who liked the red team's dish? One, two, who liked the blue team's dish? Uh-oh, blue's a big winner on this table. Red team, blue team. <laughs> Your last child is coming through. Here you go. Enjoy. The blue team, buddy. All right. Oh. Red team, blue team. Well done. Congratulations. Hey, guys. I saw a lot of full red plates. Yeah. I'm feeling good. I'm happy. We served every kid. And I think we came out and did what we wanted to do. Boys and girls, please gather around by the side of the bus. It's, like, impossible to call. I can't tell if, like, we slaughtered it or if we bombed it, because our fate's in their little, tiny, creepy hands. Let's go, guys! The students gather to vote for their favorite team. Will they choose the blue team's pasta and meat sauce menu or the red team's chicken teriyaki and rice? Boys and girls, you are now the MasterChef judges. On the count of three, I'm going to ask you to run into the square that cooked your favorite food for lunch. Was it the red team or the blue team? Come on! Come on! Woo! Come on over! Woo! Are you all ready to vote? <laughs> On the count of three, one, Two, three!
I'm feeling a little nervous. I can tell who has more kids on their side, and that's scary. When I look over to the side, I'm like, oh my god, there's just the same amount or maybe more on that side. Now the nerves are starting to kick in, man. It's just like, this could be anybody's game. Okay, boys and girls, we have the official verdict. One team scored 58% of the votes, and the other team scored 42%. The winning team is... Red Team! This has been like the best week ever for me. I got to be team captain. We had a great team. Everyone performed so well, and we won. Yeah! Oh my God! Yes! Blue team, you now face the pressure test. Where minimum one of you will be leaving the Master Chef competition. Red team wins. We know now we have to go into a pressure test, and I'm super pissed off. Somebody's gonna go home on this, so the pressure's on. This. Like, seriously, this. I'm not surprised that we lost. Jordan frazzled everybody, and it was just, it was a show, a complete show from start to finish. I'm, I'm seriously about to lose my. this way. Ooh, pressure test. One of us is out of here. One you. Of it's definitely not going to be me. The majority of my team is definitely disappointed. We're all against each other again. I'd like to chop somebody's head off for going into this pressure test. <laughs> no names. Yes. Wrong captain. If there's one person to blame for this loss, it's Jordan. It was just bad leadership. came into this competition to win. And whatever this pressure test is, I'm going to do whatever it takes to win. Yesterday, you competed in your first team challenge, feeding 300 elementary school kids. The red team, led by Jesse, are safe. None of you will be facing this extraordinary pressure test. Great job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Unfortunately, Jordan, you and your team failed to make the grade. Therefore, you are about to face a dreaded pressure test, where at least one of you will be going home. Jordan, what do you think happened? I think our inexperience serving large crowds surfaced its ugly head. And uh, we had to think on our feet. We ended up changing it up. And I know that screwed us in the end. We or you? Because certain people were delivering throughout, like Chrissy and her vision on the sauce. Howard made almost 200 meatballs. And then there was everyone else who was looking for your direction. <clears throat> Listen carefully. Here's the good news. There are nine home cooks in front of us. But just six of you will compete in this pressure test. And the person who will choose who is safe is... Listen carefully. Here's the good news. There are nine home cooks in front of us. But just six of you will compete in this pressure test. And the person who will choose who is safe is... is you, Jordan, oh. the team captain. Who do you honestly think did well enough to be saved from tonight's pressure test? The first name is someone that 
executed well yesterday, but it's also somebody that I think I can beat farther on down the road. I'm gonna save Howard. Howard. Well done. Head upstairs to the gallery. Thank you. Jordan absolutely made the best decision by saving me. Because, yeah, I made a few mistakes in the kitchen, but, like, I'm a badass when it comes to, like, making sure that mission is completed. As your second choice, who are you saving from elimination? This is somebody that helped me out a lot yesterday. It's also somebody I don't want to face in a pressure test. I'm going to save James. James. Off we go. Jordan, you have one more save left. But before you make your choice, let me tell you something. As team captain, you can choose to save yourself. I think when it comes down to it, this is a competition. So I'm going to take it for myself. Please go upstairs. Chrissy, give me your insights. Listen, honor is honor. That was a bitch move. In my neighborhood, that'd get your ass kicked. Captain goes down with the ship. I think it's stupid to not save yourself. You're going to go down with your ship? Well, I'm not a captain of a ship. I'm a captain of a team that is no longer a team. OK, are you ready to find out the dish that will determine your MasterChef future? Cheesecake. I've never made cheesecake. I don't even like cheesecake. I've baked enough cheesecakes that I'm feeling good. So I think I'm the safest at this point. Let's be honest, that is a true American classic. The perfect balance between flavor and texture. Absolutely unique. But one mistake with your techniques, and the whole thing can become a total disaster. Please, head to your stations. At your stations, you all have identical ingredients. There's also a limited pantry in case you want your cheesecake to stand out from the pack. You have just 90 minutes to prepare, bake, chill, and garnish one amazing cheesecake that will save you from elimination. Your 90 minutes starts now. Good luck. Who do you think is going to shine? Who's going to fall? I'm expecting a lot from Chrissy, Savannah, experienced bakers. Kathy, I'm not sure about. I think Johnny is out of his depth. I'm afraid that Eddie does not have the technical skills to execute this cake. Medic! Adriana's already cut herself. How can you cut yourself making a cheesecake? Making a cheesecake. Cheese so the secret behind a great cheesecake is in the base. When your base is solid, your mixture is solid. First of all, start the base. Get the base into the fridge, set it. Sugar, mm -hmm. eggs, whisk, and then lightly break down the cheese and incorporate that. What do you think that they're going to have them in the oven for? 40 minutes? 45 minutes? Yeah, 45. 50? 45, okay. 50 minutes. But if you take that out one minute too early, it's going to sink with a huge, almost like a, a massive hole in the middle. So this is all about that jeopardy. Right, Kathy, what are you doing in there? I'm making a berry compote, waiting for the berries to uh, burst. Mm -hmm. In just an hour from now, you could be leaving the competition. Yeah, you're right. Cheesecake's in the oven. Cheesecake's in the oven. All of you, by now, should have your cheesecakes in the oven. Start thinking about the topping and how well the topping blends with the texture of your cheesecake. Savannah. Dessert's quite a strong point for you. Mm -hmm. Confident? Definitely. I'm yeah. going to make a uh, salted caramel cheesecake. So are you going to ripple the actual cheesecake with the salted caramel? The caramel's going to go on top. Have you got what it takes to stay in this competition? Absolutely. 
Adriana. Uh, so I have my cheesecake in mm -hmm. the oven, and here I have some guava paste and some mangoes. Guava paste? Yes. You feel confident today? I do. I'm, I don't have much of a sweet tooth, but cheesecake is something I actually love. Great. Ladies and gentlemen, 20 minutes to go. A simple cheesecake will determine your MasterChef future. What the hell? I noticed that my oven is smoking. Something's burning. What's burning? I cannot believe this just happened. I'm going home. Like, I'm done. Like I'm just going to go ahead and pack my bags and go home. Something's burning. What's burning? What the hell? I got a broke pan. It's dripping out the bottom. My cheesecake is dripping from the bottom. Something's wrong with my pan, so it's leaking. I take my cheesecake out of the oven. I take aluminum foil and place it underneath my pan. And it finally stops dripping. If I can get my cheesecake to start cooking quicker, everything will solidify so that there's nothing to leak out. Coming up to two minutes to go. Come on. Show some flair. That was badass. <laughs> Johnny, I'm worried about. You know slices of pineapple don't sit well on top of a cheesecake. No. You'll never cut it. Kathy, she made a fruit compote that looks like restaurant quality. Andriana just used canned guava paste. Guava paste in a cheesecake. Right. Come on. Here we are. Enhance those finishing touches. Five, four, three, two, one, and stop, guys. Well done. Now it's time to taste those amazing looking cheesecakes and find out who has just cooked their last dish. Let's start off with Chrissy. Let's go, please. Her cheesecake looks awful for me. She knows it too. Yeah, I see Chrissy's dish, and I think her plating's like her, clunky. Go, oh, Chrissy. My cheesecake fell. It's not the most beautiful cake. It's no. And what is uh, what are these round things? Those are those are raspberry bombs. That's good looking cheesecake. You see, <laughs> had this stayed up another inch, we would have had the perfect specimen. This cheesecake has a lightness and a restraint to it. It's beautiful. The crust is nice and thin. This is very fluffy, light, flavorful. Delicious. You keep giving me food that I'm used to eating at home. Thank you. Very rich, very creamy. The raspberry, it's not cloying and heavy, which just provides a nice little pop of Thank acidity. You. Great job. Yeah, that's as good as it gets. It's got the base exactly the way it should be. Look at the shiny texture of the filling. It's got class. I mean, real class. You're a force to be reckoned with because it tastes absolutely sublime. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Listen, if you're not scared of me, you should be. Because I can cook. Johnny, please bring your cheesecake forward. Uh, it's a pineapple foster topping with a uh, toasted coconut and a raspberry blood orange whipped cream. So for me, as a New Yorker, when I want a cheesecake, I want a cheesecake that's thick. You're a man of adventurous flavors, but this is like a lumberjack trying to do a pirouette. It's all crust. The cheesecake part of the cheesecake has a good flavor. The pineapples don't really make sense. They're very fibrous. They kind of contrast the texture, which I don't like. Well, you might have missed the spirit of this cheesecake. OK, Kathy, let's go, please. Uh, just a regular cheesecake. Um, on the top, I did a blueberry, blackberry compote. Topping's great. What really makes that cheesecake sing is the lemon. Overall, a cheesecake that asks you to come back and try some more. Thank you. Eddie. It's a vanilla bean cheesecake with a mixed berry compote on top. Mm. 
Mm. So, what's the problem there? Did you cook the berries down? I cooked them down. So they're bleeding now. So before you put that on top of your cheesecake, then you need to drain that. Yeah, it's delicious. Thank you. Had you just drained that fruit first, for me, that would have been a 10 out of 10. However, it's a bloody good effort, let me tell you. I appreciate it. All right, Savannah, please come forward. You know, Savannah bakes. That's what Savannah does. But I'm looking at Savannah's cheesecake. She might be in a little bit of trouble here. It's a salted caramel cheesecake with a hazelnut almond griddle and a honey whipped cream. So almost half of that cheesecake is the base. You almost don't even taste the actual cheesecake part. This topping here, it's like maple candy. It's poor execution. The flavor isn't there. Someone's going home, and you're in that mix right now. Seems like you made this cake to try and help Johnny stay in the competition. Now, honestly, what do you think of that cake? It's too sweet, and the crust is too thick. You think this cake should save your spot in the Master Chef kitchen? I know that I didn't execute it, but I would like to stay. Unfortunately, we're not here to make you happy. We're here to find the next Master Chef. I think this cake should save your spot in the Master Chef kitchen. I know that I didn't execute it, but I would like to stay. Unfortunately, we're not here to make you happy. We're here to find the next Master Chef. Last up, Adriana, please. Let's go. It is a mango guava cheesecake. It looks like a Victoria sponge. It looks like a tart, not a cake. And guava. I saw a can of. Was it guava paste? It was guava paste. So it wasn't even fresh fruit? No. My big problem is the guava. If it was a processed plant and we're looking for 10,000 cheesecakes, I'd use something canned. But there's something really weird about canned guava. What a shame. Uh, the guava, mango, all cooked down. It doesn't have that huge tropical flavor. And the coconut on top really doesn't add anything except a little bit of chew, because it's untoasted. I wanted to do something different. I didn't want to go too homey. Yeah, I admire that. I just don't think it went the way that you wanted. The crust is like sand. Secondly, the topping has no relevance to the cake. And this cake might have just bought Savannah. Another day, you're in the MasterChef kitchen. OK, all of you, please step forward. Tough pressure test. We asked for one of the most classic desserts anywhere in the world. A stunning cheesecake. OK. Eddie, Chrissy, Kathy, step forward, please. You three really came up with a stunning cheesecake. Thank you, Chef. Congratulations. You're all safe. Join the gallery. Well done. Great job. Johnny, the topping was nowhere near MasterChef quality. The filling, you nailed. You're safe. Frankly, I'm shocked. I can't believe I'm still here. Ladies, that was a very tough pressure test. 
I think it's gonna be Savannah that's going home and it's because Savannah's cake was even smaller than mine and the fact that I have sweetness, tartness is going to save me. Here's the sad news. We've seen great things from both of you and this has been a very, very difficult decision. I'm honestly thinking that I'm going home and I just, I'm not ready to go home yet. Adriana. Your time is done in MasterChef. Savannah, upstairs, please. You dodged that bullet. Adriana, whilst you grew up with guava, using them on top of a cheesecake, you have to be very, very careful. You should be proud, you should be super excited with what you've been able to do. I'm definitely proud. Continue that dream. <laughs> I will. Adriana, thank you. Please take off your apron and leave the MasterChef kitchen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank Good you. night. I don't know exactly where I'm going from here. I just know that I'm not going to let this defeat me. So this is just the beginning. <laughs> <laughs>